Good morning, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to Straight Talk Vermont. It's a beautiful Friday here in Little Park in Burlington. We're looking forward to speaking with Dr. Hal Colston, our state representative. And uh, we're here with Bruce Wilson as well. <laughs> and uh, how are we doing this morning, Hal? I'm doing great. Beautiful day. Beautiful day to be good, here. Good to be here. Good to be, good to be alive. Thank you for yes. joining us. Bruce, how are you doing? I'm, I'm well, you know, like Dr. Colson said it all, you know, being alive, you know, I always like, woke up this morning, everybody like, <laughs> like it was like, how's your day? And they're like, um, well, you, you forget the big number one answer <laughs> is that you woke up this morning. You know, I mean, that's nothing, that's everything else, a bonus in the day. So, yeah, I'm, so I'm well, you know I mean? We got a lot to do, you know, on our, our team here, Hunter, we got a lot to do today, um, plan our events, planning our events and um, going over all the things we we're working on. So I always look forward to um, for that, you know what I mean, with, with you guys. So I'm good. Of course, of course. Well, we're very excited to be here today with Hal. Um, Dr. Hal Colston, uh, he is our state representative, like I'd mentioned, among many, many other titles we look forward to <laughs> digging into. Um, it really is a pleasure to be here with you today, Hal. Um, the resume I have uh, read about so far is just absolutely incredible, and I really, it's a pleasure to be with uh, an individual who's impacted our community so greatly in Vermont. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for being here. Um, so speaking of Vermont, since this is the state, you know, you've done so many beautiful things in. How exactly did you come to find yourself here? Well, you know, when I look back on it, I think it was a calling. Um, it was April 1989. I got a phone call out of the blue from a friend who had just relocated to Essex Junction and um, the New England Culinary Institute was mm -hmm. opening its second campus at the Inn at Essex. Awesome. So um, our friend Brad was looking for uh, a director of catering for their new operation. And uh, less than a month later, I'm packing my bags to come to this place called Vermont. And to be honest, I wasn't quite sure which side of New Hampshire Vermont was on. I just knew it was north and cold. Um, and uh, it was the whitest state in the country at that point. So coming from Philadelphia was clearly uh, like being in the frontier uh, to come to a place like this. Uh, and what was very interesting, before I left, I believe it was, uh, it, it might have been Mother's Day. It was uh, a service at our church. It was a Presbyterian church. And there was this pastor, um, Connie Parby, a uh, Lutheran pastor from Jericho, Vermont. And she happened to be at the Lutheran seminary that weekend and was our guest preacher. And she also conducted our, you know, adult forum. And she was just very intriguing, you know, something about her uh, just drew me to uh, her, her, her space and her spirit. So fast forward, we moved to Vermont, family's here, I got three young kids growing up here. Um, my oldest, Marissa, was in the Essex Children's Choir. So they had a holiday um, pageant and uh, we were at the Congregational Church in Essex Junction. And I'm making my way through the crowd to find Marissa and right in front of me walks Connie Parvey, who I had met in Philadelphia. And I turned wow. around and tapped her on her shoulder and I said, excuse me, I think I've met wow, you uh, maybe about a month ago in Philadelphia. And she said, yes, that, that was right, that was me. I'm a pastor at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. Um, would love to have you come out and visit. And we were looking around for a church at that time. And, a few months later, we took her up, and it was love at first sight. We we joined the church, we became Lutherans. So I had turned 40 uh, in 1993, and I was really looking for something different. I had been in the food service for about 19 years. I was, you know, burning out. I wanted to just, you know, figure out something new and different. So I ended up um, leaving my last position down in Montpelier. I was the chef at the Capitol Plaza Hotel that had just reopened. And uh, I quit 
Um, and I ended up joining Community Action, which is right around the corner from here, um, and never worked in social service, uh, you know, sector before. But um, I was very fortunate that then Ginny Wynn, who was the executive director, took me in under her wing and just, you know, showed me the ropes. And I really enjoyed, for the three years that I was there, um, to just do that work. You know, like really being connected to my values of truth and justice, um, you know, helping folks figure out their way through the, you know, the tattered safety net, and get the support that they yeah. needed. And one day, this single mom with two kids on welfare um, comes through the door. I was on, you know, direct service that day. Everyone, you know, took turns to, you know, meet people where they are and try our best to help them. And she was in tears because she just bought a piece of a car uh, for 500 bucks. You know, you rob Peter to pay Paul. She was trying to figure out a way to get a job, to get off welfare. And the sad thing was she couldn't drive the car home. Didn't have any brakes. Oh, the brakes wow. did not work. Hmm. So she's in tears. <laughs> what do we do? Um, so for about two weeks, I try to help her, you know, get her money back, get the car fixed, you know, just get some sense of justice. And even though we weren't successful, this idea came to me of a car donation program. And at the time, there was a program in Shelburne, I believe, that was collecting bicycles and then sending them down to Jamaica, where people had no transportation mm -hmm. options. And I was thinking, well, why can't we do that with cars? Mm -hmm. So for about six months, I'm calling around the country to find a model. And I finally found one in Milwaukee. Uh, Esperanza Unita, Hope United, and it was a, a, a car donation program, but the cars were used to be uh, a training vehicle for welfare dads mm -hmm. who wanted to become mechanics. Mm. So uh, then I knew I was on to something and they were very, very helpful. They shared all their information with me, but I just wanted to do it for someone like Deborah, who um, for, for for the lack of resources, she just could not imagine getting into a safe, reliable vehicle. Um, at the same time, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, I, I became uh, a Lutheran and joined Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Jericho. My pastor, Connie Parvey, uh, invited me to this group, and it was about five different Lutheran congregations that were meeting for over a year, uh, twice a month, and they were trying to figure out who is our neighbor and what are the needs of our neighbor? Because Lutheran Social Services, which is the largest uh, faith-based uh, social service agency in the country, did not have any programs in Vermont at that time. So they were looking to start up their first program. Uh, so I got invited to a meeting. Um, they were testing out this survey tool and I was, uh, because I was working uh, in the nonprofit sector, they wanted to, to test it out on me. And uh, I kind of just really connected with the group and started attending you know, meetings thereafter. Um, then it got to the point where we all had to go out in the community and actually do the survey. And when the results came back, it was all about the lack of transportation equity. Mm -hmm. And LSS didn't know what to do with that. But meanwhile, I had in my back pocket this, this one page concept I called the Good Samaritan Garage. Mm -hmm. And um, in the 11th hour, when they were struggling with what to do, I introduced the idea and the entire group, it was almost like a Pentecostal moment. They were just so excited, like they were just overflowing with excitement about the idea. And I rode home with Connie Parvey that night and I shared with her my story about how I got to Vermont and it was that night that I knew then and there that it was, that it was why I came to Vermont was to start the Good News Garage. No right. doubt about it. And, and it's interesting because they loved the idea, but the name didn't, didn't catch because there was a program called the Samaritan Connection at St. Michael's College. And they were concerned about being confused. And I just blurted out good news. Yeah, and, awesome. and over a year later, with $35,000, we opened up shop July 1st, uh, 1996 uh, at wow. Ascension Lutheran Church uh, in a church office and using church parking lots around the community yeah. to store cars, yeah. 
and I had my Volvo with a tow dolly and I went out and picked up cars. Yeah. I mean, it really started from, oh, yeah. from scratch. Yeah. Right, when there's a will, there's a way. That's a, so beautifully told, Hal. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's a... So, so um, <clears throat> Hal, so, I, you know, we, it's, we, I just learned we came in the same year, 89. But um, I also was um, part of um, CVOO, the Community Action. I was, I was on the board of directors. And, um, and they had, I, I was just talking about it yesterday to uh, Mara Collins, who, who was, we just had a meeting with, about, um, like, CVOO, Community Action, has, like, 16 businesses. And mm -hmm. when they sit down the... Um, the um, information about the meeting, it'd be a pack of that load, like four hour board meetings, you know, and uh, there's so many programs and projects and events, and I'm just happy that you was a part of, you know, Community Action and, um, and help us and help Community Action. Sure. CBOO get better you know, where yeah. they are today. They got a lot of stuff going on. So, wow, bro, that's a good story. And, um, yeah. And, um, Hey, I'm, it's my first time. I might have heard it before because you know we, yeah. you know, I'm sure you have told it um, in a lot of places. We both yeah. been, you know, meetings or whatever it was, um, and it's still going strong today. Right, yeah. down, right down yeah. the street from us. Yeah, it was uh, in September last year. It was their 25th anniversary. Wow, 25th. Wow. And uh, they were celebrating their 5,000th car that was mm. being, you know, matched up to typically a single mom. 80% of the vehicles go to single moms. Yeah. And uh, the rest is history because having a reliable, affordable vehicle yeah. can change your life and your family's life. Exactly. So the, the cars are sourced from donations? That's yes. correct. They're sourced from donations. The donor um, gets a tax write-off. Uh, probably one out of seven or one out of eight vehicles are worth repairing. The others may get auctioned off, which, which you know funds the program. Um, but it certainly has made a huge difference. Right, right. That's just uh, all around a, a great cycle yeah. of giving back and and, you know. and just to explain how we got into uh, the the building uh, down the street on North Winooski Ave, uh, then Congressman Bernie Sanders, uh, who would always come back and do town hall meetings, mm -hmm. was up in the Northeast Kingdom, mm -hmm. and he went to two different meetings and heard similar stories from single moms about how their lives were transformed because of getting a car from the Good News Garage. So when he gets back to Washington, um, he tells his staff about this, and I get a call from Warren Gunnels on his sure. staff. Mm -hmm. And Warren said, hey, uh, you know, Congressman's really impressed with what you're doing. You're, you're helping lives in Vermont. You know, how can we help you grow? Wow. And at the time, the Burlington Community Land Trust had just taken over uh, the, the, the building that houses the Good News Garage, and they were looking to renovate it into a large you know, community-based project. So we needed to raise $1.7 million to renovate the space. And so when Warren Gunnels asked me, well, what do you need? I said, well, we could use a million bucks, okay? And I told him why. And we had a couple further conversations and about three months later, I get a call from Bernie and he said that he had secured an $850,000 earmark for our expansion project. And a year later, we raised the other 850,000. Wow. But it was those awesome two that. stories wow. up in the Northeast Kingdom that, that wow. moved mountains and allowed There's us no to doubt about it. move into it's that still space. still going on today. That's wow. the main thing. It's yeah. Still going on, you know. That's amazing. We're, we're proud of that move right there. Now, Vermont has been, though, it's kind of interesting. It's been, it's, from you from Philly, I'm from Chicago, and it's totally, like you said, totally different from, mm. it's, it's almost like a shock almost when we first get here, you know, because, like, you know, you, you don't see no people who look like us, you know what I'm saying? Right, you know, right, right. And um, you'd be like, you know, oh, I, I already, and it was white, like you said, white state in America, you know, and, and it was, you know, and um, I think, um, because of now it's like number two, we made it. We made a difference, Hal. <laughs> yeah, and, and <laughs> they, who don't say one vote don't count. And, and I, the reason why I really love this space mm -hmm. is that mm -hmm. it's very human scale. Yeah, um, no doubt. You know, you can meet the governor at the grocery store. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you know, yeah. it's just amazing how how small it is and how how connected it can be. No doubt. And uh, so that to me is, is a real strength of, of our state. It's almost like a big laboratory where we can try things out, make things happen and, and kind of lead the way. Certainly, yeah, yeah, Vermont's it. like a, an incubator box, mm -hmm. so to mm -hmm. speak, of goodness. Exactly. It's lovely. Well, that's, thank you so much for sharing about Good News Garage. Sure. Like we'd mentioned, that's just one thing of the amazing uh, 
amazing list I have here. Um, so you've worked on many nonprofit boards as well. Um, to go over a few, let me know if I miss any. Uh, Vermont Public Broadcasting System, the Flynn Center for Performing Arts, the Vermont College of Fine Arts, Young Writers Project, um, the Howard Center, mm -hmm. United Way of Chittenden County, um, uh, the Center for Whole Communities, mm -hmm. uh, and then you served on the board for the Richard and Barbara Snelling Center for Government. Mm -hmm. Wow. Any more? Am I? Yeah, yeah, the, of course, the, there's more. The, <laughs> more said, the, the, the VNA of uh, uh, Chittenden County. From our nursing uh, association. And I, uh, I, I chaired that board. I also chaired the board of Vermont, um, uh, Vermont Health Foundation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there are several others. Yeah. It's, it's, it's been a long ride. <laughs> That's yeah, a the, lot of good work for I know, our state. I know, for the community, right? Yeah. And for the state, you're right. You know, it's not only um, the work you've done is laying back to the state. And as well as, yeah. like we always say that, we you know, we'll provide a service. We provide a service for the world. Right. And that's what you do. You know, yeah. it's like you took something from Philadelphia or for all the places where you are, and you brought it to Vermont, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, so some, somebody, you guarantee, yeah. is taking it to some, out of some other country. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, so you provide a, a service for the people of the world and, we, and that's that's it's, it's no doubt about it i mean we really appreciate that and i learned a lot from this a lot of learn from how coming up through the years and um based on all the things you've done you know i worked for you on some some different things here and there you know um you, you appointed me you wanted, wanted to appoint me to be the one of the commissioners and uh safe and healthy connected people and mm -hmm. uh and um, um what do you see well we we all live in Winooski, mm -hmm. which is awesome and um and so i still serve on a lot of different committees and um you know and boards and around you know with new ski but um that was a great thank you for doing that for me because sure. i thought I, could, I just like you probably thought why you chose me is that i can help make a difference and i think i have you know and I still that's make great a difference that's great uh when you need people like you know um, leaders you know like um you you and people who like me who learn from leaders like you to help make the um mm. when you ski the world better right. once again you right know? And, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just proud to know you and all the things you, do, you know, do. A lot of people have asked me, "Do I know you?" I'm like, probably <laughs> say yes, I do. I know her for ten years or thirty years or now it's 1989 or somewhere, you know. But uh, I'm proud to say I do, you know, because um, it's a, we always try to work in our organization on positives. You know sure. I mean? like, we don't want no negatives. We work on our positive because you're gonna get a negative right if you add it up. So we always work on positives and. And just to know people like you, man, it's like, and your ideas and suggestions, I'm sure we're going to be um, trying to figure out what word we can use from, mm -hmm. based on what you've done, mm -hmm. something to, that we can make make ourselves, what we do better. Right. I know it's, it's a fact, because um, that's, that's how we think, you know what I mean? It's right. like, we always need others to help meet the goals and dreams, aspirations of people. And that's what we do, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. we're just proud to be able to work with you mm -hmm. and um, love your programs and see when I'm talking about Vermont, what some of the things Lauren had mentioned about what you, what's, what's going on here, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, I don't want to see it, put it like this, uh, how, but you know, a lot of things that like people say, well, I didn't know that the black people invented um, traffic lights or uh, plasma, you know what I mean? They, people just don't know that. And it's like, and then uh, you, I, I have never said this, but, you know, uh, I probably will. Like that, all the things you have accomplished in the state, you know, with all the nonprofits. And like I can say, well, you know, and it's African American who actually put that together. You know, it's like, you know, for the whitest state in America. You know, and so it, it, you're one of those guys. You know, you're one of those people that people don't really don't know, but they really know you. But you know, what I'm saying. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So that's awesome to right? be able to say how, because um, you know, we, you know, it's so awesome to be humble and. You know, and help the community. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel this, when you tell the story about the lady, about the car, I feel I, I was feeling that. You know what I mean? Because that's where we are. You know what I'm saying? Dang, she got shook for five hundred dollars yep. in yep. the car. Don't yep. have no brakes, man. You know what I mean? You know, and that, and that you, you know, you thought it wasn't like, you know, you felt uh, emotional right. right then. You went home and everything, and did your studies and due diligence, and, and you found out it stuck with you for a long time. Right, right, right. And and I think we're all given opportunities to make a difference. Yeah. And and those those opportunities are called days, and we get them one at a time. That's right. Yeah. There's no guarantee for tomorrow. And on that particular in that particular moment, mm -hmm. it was my time to do something. Yeah. And that's why I reacted as I did. But as you mentioned. Where, where I've served on boards. My first introduction to the Snelling Center for Government 
was through their uh, Vermont Leadership Institute. So I was in the class of 2004, and uh, and so the Good News Garage was was going gangbusters, and and I just wasn't quite sure if I could fit another thing in, but but I did, and uh, it became a transformative experience that VLI experience, and into our second month, it was uh, October of 2003. Uh, we were, where were we? I think we were down in um, uh, Killington. Anyways, uh, it was a very powerful weekend for me because there were two things that really touched me about leadership. One was the definition, uh, and and it's it, it's it's simply uh, leadership is about coping with change, and that really resonated with me because. In so many ways, I was dealing with so many issues around trying to get the garage started from from thirty five thousand dollars to right, this right. to this one point three million dollar operation. Um, and then the other thing that I learned was that leaders don't do very well in an environment where the the, the where the leadership is centralized and bureaucratic. And that was exactly. Lutheran Social Services, mm -hmm. which I basically gave my idea to, and they helped mm -hmm. to fund it and get it going. Mm -hmm. So that weekend, it was a Saturday, mm -hmm. October 25th. Mm -hmm. I'm in the shower, seven o'clock in the morning, and I got zapped. I decided then and there that I was quitting my job as the founding director of the Good News Garage with no idea what I was gonna do. So at the end of that day, we all sat around in a circle, about 24 of us, and we all went around and, and shared, you know, what, what, what group do we want to become a part of? There were like five or six groups that were, you know, that, that rose up. And I shared with them my experience in the shower that morning and how I decided that I'm quitting my job mm -hmm. and with no clue of what was next. And I wanted to be with the new beginners because I just knew as a leader and, and able to grow, I needed to do something different. So I had to drive, you know, over two hours home, you know, to tell my wife, uh, hey, honey, guess what? I just quit my job. <laughs> and I did. And then the, and then the following meeting in November, we, we gathered down in Grafton uh, for a weekend. And I had already mapped out this new idea called Neighbor Keepers. And it was a, a nonprofit that would utilize a circle of support model. So when someone's struggling with a lack of resources, which is what I like mm. to say instead of somebody who's poor or in poverty. Right, exactly. Because we all at times lack resources. No doubt about it. And you know, and, and some folks just have way too many. That's why we're so lacking. glad you around too. Because <laughs> you know, when, when I think of you and I put this big smile on my face because I'm thinking of you, I think of you as like, there's a resource. I mean, that I can at least mm. ask a question or get some real answers. Mm. I mean, I don't have to go looking at here and then I just, you know, if you got the answer, I just come ask you, you know, or text you, yeah. whatever. Yeah. And so how wonderful is that? So, you, so you're a resource, yes, sir. So, so I had this idea, I laid it out to my cohort. They were all excited about it. Um, and two, two months later, I actually left, left the job at Good News Garage <laughs> after being there for eight years to start up this new nonprofit. It took me about a year to raise $70,000. And then we began this, this model where you bring together the community um, and it's an organic process because community members who are struggling with the lack of resources need support. And that support are our are, are new friends. So we have a circle of three volunteers who learn to become friends and learn to deepen the relationship with that community member which I describe as an emotional bank account where you're making those deposits of sharing your story, doing things together, seeing where you have connections, um, becoming friends and, and trusting. And, and it's not until you accomplish that can you make the withdrawals of having a serious conversation with, with your community member about you know, accountability or, or what have you. Um, so, so that was a model that really took off and, uh, uh, and we actually touched a lot of lives in, in this community as well as Winooski who, who actually were able to maintain these relationships long after the program. Um, and that's the whole idea. You know, we, we, 
we're relational beings. And if you're isolated because of your struggling with the lack of resources, um, you're, you're, you're not a full person. No. And, 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 and we need to look at it that it's our responsibility if we have the means and the way to help people connect and bring them into the community so that we can all benefit from, from all the diverse voices and perspectives uh, uh, to, to make our place a better place. Very well said. Um, and is that still going today? No, it's not. Um, I, I, I didn't have a plan to carry it on because out of nowhere, uh, I got a call from uh, then Governor Shumlin to join his, uh, his, his, his staff as the director of uh, uh, Serve Vermont, mm -hmm. which is the AmeriCorps yeah. uh, Vista State Office. So um, I took on that role and, and just didn't have a, and actually my, my, my goal would have been to uh, have that become a, an AmeriCorps program. And I still think that's a viable way to su support and sustain a program like that that really touches a lot of lives. No doubt about it. Certainly. Um, would you mind talking a little bit about Serve Vermont and sure. what you did there? Sure. Well, first of all, I, I, I helped to change the name. It was then known as the Vermont Commission on National and Community Service, oh, God. which is a mouthful. Yeah, it is. Um, and um, so we went through a process and came up with the name Serve Vermont because that's exactly what it's about. Um, but essentially, we would receive uh, several million dollars a year from the federal government, about 80% of our budget, and the rest came from the Vermont General Fund. And, and we were able then to, to stand up and support uh, AmeriCorps and VISTA programs around the state. Yeah. Um, some have been in existence for, for quite some time. Um, there were a couple new ones that we were bringing along, mm -hmm. and, and, and then their, their programming was either, if you're a, a VISTA mm -hmm. uh, volunteer, uh, you're about creating sustainability in a community. And if you're an AmeriCorps volunteer, you do direct service. Yep. So those are the distinctions between VISTA and AmeriCorps. And, I, I, and, and, and it really is a, a great way to get young people and even no retired people, no you know, back into connecting with the community, doing something meaningful. Um, and in many ways for, for some of those uh, members, um, it becomes a job for them no or an entree into yeah, a job with the organization that they're working Normally. with. Yeah, right. I, uh, so uh, <clears throat> thank you for helping us out, start that problem. AmeriCorps um, investors, I've had them through all my programs and all the programs we have, and we don't have 50 awards because because of them. Because like I would meet with the governor or the mayor or somebody and they like Bruce would do, I'd say, well, you got AmeriCorps then? And yeah, well, we want to work with them. You know what I mean? Because they were boots on the ground. And I used to tell my AmeriCorps, I said, you know what, David, you, you know, the policy say you're on 24 so He's like, hey, when I say, you got to work with us. I say you got to do it. Yeah, no, I'm saying whatever. But in a 24 seven, and that's a lot, you know, to be on call and dedication to work with the organization. But they learn so much because, you know, the goal is part of what you have to do is make sure they got a space to operate out of, go to meetings, be able to allow them to go to meetings sure. and trainings and uh, things like that. And, um, and so they learn a lot of, uh, um, they learn from all a lot mm. of our community, probably people yeah. we work with, right. what we're trying to do. That's why we got the Vista mm. or AmeriCorps mm. to help us connect, you know, or, or do volunteer or, um, resources or whatever, whatever yeah. we ask them to do, whatever they direct service. And, um, and so as they get older or graduate, you know, cause they get a stipend for college, five grand or whatever it was to, to continue that for their funds for college. And, um, just think of the people who go to America is what they get out of and what they do in the world once they leave, mm. you know, some, some program that, you know, a program that you help, you know, create and, um, and, and um, a, a curriculum or agenda, whatever, whatever you want, whatever the, um, the program itself and um, what they learn from it. And then they take on to around the world, bro, mm -hmm. and, and, mm -hmm. and be able to t teach people uh, about what, about the program, about different things. But not only that, 
not only to get to teach people about what they learned or what you know, um, they well, the, they uh, boost so they didn't really know book. They actually was knocking on the door. They was actually talking to the community people. They was actually going, working, um, enrolling in training. We sent them to training programs all the time because we wanted them to uh, learn, mm. be smart, being able to connect. You don't have. I don't have to go with them. Mm. They say the wall is white, and we believe them. You sure. know what I mean? We don't have to go check ourselves. You know what I mean? And so, Miracle Vistas and wow. Incredible, man. Yeah. I, I didn't want to talk to nobody. I don't, you know, well, we're going to send you to the mayor. <laughs> no, no, you got to with the business. <laughs> That's who yeah. I want to talk to. Yeah, it came about, I think, is back during the uh, uh, Kennedy administration. Yeah. Wow. Oh, really? A long, 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 long time, yeah. yeah. And I mean, they don't do that anymore, though. It, it's done. It's a done program. Right? Well, th no, it, it's, it still exists. Uh, and Ma America, oh yeah, America and Vista, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's always should be done through CEDAW, but it's not done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it may move around from different, you know, oh. sites. Okay. Maybe CEDAW closed up, but then it opens up somewhere else. Okay. So as we were talking about the AmeriCorps um, and the Vista, Vista, so Vista, how do um, people get involved with those programs here in Vermont? Yeah, um, that's a great question. Um, I would say reaching out to the Serve Vermont office. Um, you can probably begin that application process. A lot of it's online, but you can get a sense of, of where the programs are, what are what are they about? Is there anything that might be a match in terms of you know what your interest might be? Uh, but that's where I would start by calling Serve Vermont. Awesome, that's yeah. a great resource. Oh, Thank no you. Um, so after Serve Vermont, uh, you went on to serve as a, the Partnership for Change Director. Yes, correct? that was another interesting story. Yeah. Uh, I was serving on the steering committee of the Partnership for Change, uh, which was just getting started. Um, it was a multi-million dollar grant from the uh, an education foundation, and it was to bring Winooski and Burlington school districts together mm -hmm. to the table so they could learn about how to stand mm -hmm. up a student-centered, proficiency-based learning system uh, with a focus on the high schools. So they were looking for a director at that time. Um, they, had a, they had two teachers that were interim directors, and they were looking for a full-time director. Um, and one day, uh, the, uh, the grant writer for the Burlington School District, who was on the steering committee, uh, asked me, well, are you going to apply? And I said, apply? Apply for what? Apply to be the director. I said, no, I'm not going to apply to be the director. And then she went on to tell me why I should apply. And I'm going, what's well, going I'm on here? Did, what's going on here? They, I'm glad they did. You did apply and, they, and you accepted the position. So I thought on it and thought on it. <laughs> and Big deal. the last day, the deadline for submitting applications, I submitted an application. Mm -hmm. Went through the process and got hired as a director and I served there for five years. Wow. So yeah, that's incredible. I came out of left field, mm -hmm. um, but once again, mm -hmm. it's it's discerning. Is this another calling? Is this something I should be, no doubt. you know, pursuing? Um, and mm -hmm. yeah, that's how. No they doubt about it. You, and that, it was a calling because you know, as you thought on it, and um, and then your higher power said, "It's how it's working in divine order. The divine order, divine opulence is you need to do the footwork. And this this is the mm -hmm. other part of what you got to do." And you got to do this to learn from this to get to there. And so um, I, be, I already believe our stories are written, you know, in God, in the way mm -hmm. guys wanted mm -hmm. to do it, wrote, wrote. But uh, that was an incredible um, project. Uh, I know you were talking about um, like students um, being in like a um, different, like you know, not in a classroom setting, more out of the class kind of deal. Like in the school, you could do, have classes right in the hallway, right in over here, right in. Well, the, the, the main thing that that program accomplished, and I think Winooski did it really well, um, is to embrace this idea of, of proficiency, mm -hmm. you know, proficiency-based learning. Like, what is that really about? And what it does, it begins to flip the paradigm that we have for school. Right now, you have 12 years through grade 12 to get through and graduate. But what if you need more time? Right. And that's what happens for a lot of students. They need more time. Mm -hmm. So how do you make it more flexible? And how do you flip it around so that the constant 
is mastery. Proving that you have mastered a unit so you can move to the next unit to the next unit. And the variable is time. So it's, it's the reverse of what we have now. And it was such a powerful story. There was this um, chemistry teacher at Burlington High School. We went on a trip to New York City. We saw all these amazing, you know, kind of uh, 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 educational models. And she just drank the Kool-Aid around proficiencies. So she totally revamped her curriculum and made it a proficiency-based oh, wow. learning oh, program. So awesome. And what that means is you just got to demonstrate that you can get an 80 and then you move on to the next unit and to the next mm -hmm. unit. And if you need more time, you, you take more time. Right. She had a, a, a spectrum of students, um, um, English learners, uh, low income, um, middle class, high flyers, mm -hmm. the whole gamut. Mm -hmm. And typically the, the low income students, the students of color, English learners, tended to be the ones who were struggling, maybe failing. Right. After she revamped with proficiencies, everyone was passing. Everyone was moving towards that, that end goal. Um, and that's the power of, of, of changing that paradigm and making time the variable. Right. That I, uh, I think I remember the change switching over sometime when I was still in school mm -hmm. for my, uh, my, um, my high school as well. And it definitely, you know, helped it go from, mm -hmm. you know, just uh, getting by to pass and, yep. you know, students slipping through the cracks yes. to everyone yes. actually being and feeling accountable for their own learning. Yeah. And actually more um, intrigued and immersed in their learning because it wasn't solely focused on the letter grade they were all stressed exactly. about getting. Exactly. Yeah. It's about actually consuming the content and applying it to real life. That's right. That's, that's right. That's wonderful. Yeah. And um, and I mean we you know students want to know that they're 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 smart and they're valued. Right. Right. And and if we gotta change this system in a way to allow for that, then we need to do that. Exactly. No doubt about that's it. Awesome. You know, that's that, that's what we have advisory youth advisory boards and to help to make the decisions on our programs, projects, and events because, you know, they all smart in their own ways. We were just talking about personalities and uh, different things yesterday. You know, everybody's different. I don't care if you just your twin, you came out two one minute before your twin. They still different. They might look the same. Mm -hmm. They still different. They got different thinking, different ways. Some of them, one of them might want to wear a skirt, and one of them might want to pair of pants all the time. But their thinking is um, is valued because they're all they got their own personalities, and you can't just go by what the whatever it is that's you know the one through five that you should be a part of you got to ask them well what does one through five mean to you you know what how, that, mm -hmm. how do you what do you think about that you know what i mean so so that's how you got to create it. and what you did with the proficiency and um uh, Winooski schools are incredible with mm -hmm. that program they they down for you know we work with the superintendent and um mm -hmm. And that program's been there for for how long now? It's been a while. Oh, it's 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 gone on ten years. Yeah, yeah. I know those kids, those students must love that. You know, what I mean, it's yeah. a, it was the best program. It probably I don't know in no other high school that that program would might have fit the best that mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But Winooski definitely is the best program. That, uh, that program is the best program for Winooski High School, right? or is it it's just a high school student, right? It's well, not, the idea is that it goes into the entire district. Okay, and, and that's why I think. Winooski has, has an advantage because they're all under one roof under on yeah. one campus yeah. and it's like a big family. No doubt about it. Yeah. And, and build a new incredible school. You see that? Oh, I know. Yeah, wow. it's coming along. Gigantic. Well, somewhere along there in 2014, you were named Vermonter of the Year. Yeah, that was kind of crazy. Amazing. I mean, well deserved, Hal. Yeah, thank you. Uh, clearly. He's got that award. He's been talking, oh, that's amazing. He got that award right there. No, no. <laughs> Show us the award. Come on, Hal. I'm, 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 I'm very introverted. And people are always surprised to hear that, but I'm just mm -hmm. very introverted. And yeah. I, I'm not one who is looking for attention. Um, so I'm I, I'm just humbled by any kinds of awards like that. <laughs> right, right. You yeah. can really tell the work you do comes from your heart, and mm -hmm. it's obviously made a beautiful impact mm -hmm. everywhere you've gone. Um, so that's wonderful. Um, so 
Tell me a little bit about how I see you're wearing your uh, Winooski vest, <laughs> looking very oh, fly. <laughs> yes, we love yeah, Winooski, Vermont. <laughs> Um, how did you start getting involved in Winooski? Because I know you've been on um, a few a few positions for the city. Yeah, um, right. you know, along the way, people, various people would come up to me and say, you know, you should run for office, you should run for office. And I was like, you know, I think I get more done on the sidelines. So I just continue doing what I'm doing. <laughs> so the partnership had sunset it, which was all designed. It was a six year grant from the Nellie Mae Education Foundation. So by year six, it was gonna just dis disappear. So my job disappeared as it was planned and I was semi-retired. I mean, I didn't have any full-time work going on. I didn't want full-time work. I was doing a couple part-time things. So. Now, then, I didn't have the excuse of, I'm too busy, I don't have time, I'm busy with this. Um, so, I was, I was asked by a friend um, who really wanted me to run for city council. Mm -hmm. And she kept twisting my arm and twisting my arm. <clears throat> so, by the time I, I made that decision, it was, it was beyond the, the deadline for submitting um, your, your petition. And uh, so I had to uh, run as a write-in because I, I, I wouldn't have been on the ballot. Um, and I ran as a write-in. And there were two open seats and there were three candidates. And I, I came in second. So I got a seat on the city council. And um, because of seniority, the way it works in Winooski, uh, having seniority after a few years because it, it was some turnover, I was then um, re-elected as, as a city councilor slash deputy mayor to, to back up mayor lot whenever needed, but that was very rare. But anyways, that got me into Winooski politics mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and serving on city council, which was a, which was a great experience. Uh, there are five councilors, uh, including the mayor, and uh, worked very closely with staff and the city manager and um, do a lot of great work together. And, and you know, I, I, one of the things I was very proud of, well, to make the connection to the legislature, uh, I, I, I once again was, was encouraged to run, but I had to run as a write-in mm -hmm. because uh, Clem Bissonette, who I think had served 10 years, had decided to retire. So that was in September, mm -hmm. and that was after the ballots were printed. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to run as a write-in. Mm -hmm. So, so um, I decided, okay, I'll run as a write-in, and um, got a got a campaign manager, uh, Acacia Ram Hinsdale, who's now a senator. Um, had my kitchen cabinet, uh, raised about ten thousand dollars because when you run as a write-in, you know it's a lot more work. To, to get your name out there in front of people. And, and one clever thing I, I discovered was I could use a sticker of my name that you could put on the ballot. So you wouldn't have to, because if you misspell the name, then the ballot's thrown out. That's the way it works. So, uh, but Clem never really endorsed me, which is interesting. Um, he was a Democrat, I'm a Democrat. Um, even though the local committee endorsed me. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just thought that was interesting. So on election day, he actually came in first mm -hmm. by about 300 votes. I came in second. And the next day he decided that he wasn't going to retire because the people spoke oh. in, in his in his view. Oh, okay. And I was kind of like, oh, OK. Um, I ended up taking the high road. A lot of my uh, Constitu future constituents were really pissed and upset with what yeah. Mr. Bissonette had done. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> even the leadership in Montpelier was upset. No doubt about it. Because how are you going to move to your dream home in Guild Hall and live in an apartment here and to be in the legislature? That didn't add up. Christmas Eve that year, Honorable he Bible decided Day. once again he was going to retire. Uh -huh. Then that kicked it to the local Democratic right. committee. Exactly. Uh, I was recommended to the governor. Yep. Um, yeah. And the governor he appointed, you. appointed me. That's right. My first he term. He did the right thing. And I got reelected the second term. Well, he did so, the right thing. So, 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 so I was right doing both jobs because 
the schedule allows for it. City Council meets on Mondays. The legislature is Tuesday through Friday. Right. So I served in both roles. And, and, and my proudest moment was making legislation happen to allow for all resident voting. That's right. That's so, right. so that's in place that now. Um, that and that, that impacts so many, about 600 new Americans Truly. who yeah. uh, should be able to vote and have that's their voice right. heard for, for, for local election issues. You know, um, it's not about statewide offices or nothing else but local. And, um, and, and now it's a matter of, of, of doing the outreach and education to understand why, why voting is important right. and why you too can vote right. um, by just simply signing this That's affidavit. It. And, I'm, uh, glad you, I'm glad you and, and that. Montpelier has done the same. Um, and I think it should be a statewide effort. No, no, at least so, and I think a matter of time it will be. Well. Um, and, and, the, and there's probably over a dozen cities and, 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 and even states that, that allow for that, you know, local non-citizen voting. Well, right, so. I, hold up for a minute. So I think uh, the governor did it, the right thing and all the supporters that you had, and I knew a lot of them, and I knew, I kind of knew the story a little bit, because I'm on Winooski, and, and, that, um, and of course I'm the Democratic Party chairman for Winooski, um, is that um, we needed some change. You know, we need some change in Winooski. Things were just going by with a few people, mm -hmm. with how they operated. They always be there, you know, in the city council room. To, you hear them from community members, not saying that, anything wrong with it but there was no other people in the room you know that should have been there mm -hmm. to be able to talk about their issues their concern their community feeling a part of something you know and when you came in to be as a city councilor and deputy mayor and legislator you know a lot of things changed i mean it is you know people who look like me are you know walking more proud you know i do do a lot for community but people who look like me you know feel more confident mm -hmm. about their you know they, they are a part they are a part of the community mm -hmm. when this when this community because they they gotta be because there's there's Hal right there you know he's doing these jobs you know he's making th sure that nothing slips through the crack and people like us are included mm -hmm. and so i i personally personally want to thank you, sir, mm. for, for doing the work and jobs you've done in Winooski, all your work, but definitely mm. for where we live at, because we all live in our And I and also give credit to uh, Eric Covey. Uh, mm. Eric is, lives in Winooski. He's the uh, chief of staff for the Secretary of State. But when he was on city council, he was really pushing strongly that we consider all resident voting. Um, mm. And actually, we, we called it we called it then non-citizen voting, but that's just such a negative connotation. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, that's, yeah. We're all resident, right? right? So hey, allow hey, for that. Hey. So anyways, I, I really give, give Eric mm. some, some uh, uh, credit for actually pushing the issue forward. And, and of course, charter changes have to be done in the right. legislature. Sure. And I happen to serve on the government operations committee, you, you which says all wrote. charter changes. Yeah, yeah. So I introduced the bill oh. and-, and you, 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 you helped write it, right? You helped write the charter change? Did you help write it? I mean, like oh, no, we, 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 some words in we, there. We have legislative counsel. Yeah, I, I know uh, the, the lawyers do. You know, yeah, we, we but, come out with a concept and then yeah, they, and they, they put, put the together. meat on the so, bone. I'm saying you, had, you came up with some- Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's all that's on that too, because yeah. I know how the lawyers like to- that's so good about that, but then, then you got to fight to get it through. Right. And so many people got some yeah. incredible good things right. that they want the attorney the legislative lawyers to write. But geez, just getting it through, it's like, you know, you got to like jockey for the position or something. Mm. I mean, you got to, you know, see what, thank you, you got it through, so. Sure. Yeah, certainly uh, paving the way of justice and equity here mm -hmm. in Vermont, How? Um, so you, after this long mm. established, important career of yours, are finally looking forward to retiring. Yes, I am. Right, and that's gonna be in October. Yes. Where are you heading out to? We are going to well, Aruba. We're going to uh, go <laughs> Aruba. No, yeah, no. me too. Where are we are going. No. <laughs> I, I got remarried uh, last fall, and um, Jean Sharoni, my wife, and- Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Yes. And we, we decided to go to Aruba because her dental hygienist uh, has been there three or four times and said, and when we were thinking about, well, where do we go? She, oh, you gotta go to Aruba, you gotta go to Aruba. So that's where we went. Yeah. And had that been there before, didn't know much about it and just fell in love with it. Oh, wow. It was just 
gorgeous. And 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 and, and, and it's the people. Very diverse. Very interesting. Yes, yes, tourism is is their number one, you know, um, makes their economy work, but it's it's the people. Okay. People laid back. They, they, they call it one happy island. Oh wow! And okay. when you're there and you hang out for a while, you can see why it has mm. that name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, people are just very, very friendly and open, um, and we just we just loved it. Yes. So we were living in this. Uh, we rented an Airbnb in this semi-gated community in Nord, and um, we drive in every day and we saw this for sale sign, right? Ooh, yeah. And uh, after outfit. about four days, we go like, you know, what's up with that? You know, like, <laughs> let's, go let's just give it a call. <laughs> you know, just, what what do they wow. go for? And, you know, like, nice, beautiful, luxury vacation mm -hmm. rental. Um, so the real estate agent said, oh, the owners are happen to be on the island. So mm -hmm. you can get a chance to meet them. Wow. And um, so we had an appointment. We went to the, to the house and no one arrived. Mm -hmm. And it was like, this is odd. So we waited about 15 minutes and then we called back. And then we realized there was another house on the other side of the complex oh. that the real estate agent referenced. And we, uh, we had to, oh, we had to confuse. Oh. So we went there and the owners were there, fell in love with the house oh, wow. and ended up buying it. Whoa. I know you got to buy one. That's so amazing. It's, yeah. And then it was just awesome. It was like, that's going to be our next venture wow. i'll find you and from the ocean we're 13 miles north of venezuela <laughs> and, and we're we're about five minutes from the beach oh, yes. yeah oh man That's i always awesome. make the joke i'm in a room i'm sitting under the, um, <laughs> on the, the coconut tree drinking a pina i always made the name for the drinking a pina colada but i might like, you know when i come visit hell the hell was that tree that i was talking about on the interview i need to get, get my pina colada and sit down and even make some business deals or something that's going to be lovely. Are you going to keep any uh, property here in Vermont? Are you? Yeah, we're going to keep our Winooski home and, and apartment. Sweet. Um, awesome. we'll, we'll do short term rentals with that. Oh, great. Um, and, uh, and, and there's something, there's a little bit of wisdom I picked up from one of my Vermont Leadership Institute experiences. My last um, session with them, uh, I introduced this whole idea of retiring and moving to Aruba. That mm -hmm. was the first group that I made it public, actually. Mm -hmm. We were in a, a critical friends group. And what that's about, you have you have three people. Uh, if, if I'm the, the person with the dilemma, I'll share my dilemma. And then you ask questions and give feedback to help me think it through, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. So one of the cohort members said, hey, can, can we grab lunch? Because we were there for like two days, I think. And um, I said, sure. And then he sat me down and said, hey, so how are things going to really be different in Aruba and you're going to be really retired and not pick up and do all of what you've been doing here <laughs> oh in Vermont for so many years? Right. And I said, that's a that's good a great question. question. <laughs> and everything you've always done is like something like divine, some divine so, footwork. So this know? is what he said. He said, tell you what, you should sit down and write out your most uh, proud accomplishments. Mm -hmm. That's like <laughs> put it on really nice paper, put it in a really nice frame, and stick it in your drawer. Mm -hmm. And two or three times a week, pull it out, check it out. I'm good. Because that that'll be a real um, mm -hmm. tactical right. way right. of steering me off in a different direction, and and actually what I've been always wanting to do is to write. Yeah. Oh. Um, I, I write little bits, in the, but I you know, sit down and maybe put together a book or two. Um, and that's what I intend to do when I'm in the Awesome. That, and all that, I, that was a great idea about um, putting that, all of your ideas in, on your compliments down and put it in the frame, put it in the desk, and then come bring it out and look at it. Because it also t will tell you that, um, um, your your accomplishments. You know what I mean, yeah. you say, well, I, I was use three words for this. I was, you know, did this. You know, three, and I feel good about these three. You know, not these three things, but three things. That boom, three things, whatever. You know, yeah. and then all of that will roll into to, oh, yeah. to, to, to something else. Even if you decide, not, you know, not going to really doing that. 
But I just, I don't, I don't, I don't feel like you're gonna be sitting out there underneath well, the I'm, coconut tree. Well, I'm, I'm gonna try something without different. Without doing something, I'm you might try be the president different. or something next time when we come out there. I mean, because you know that you know, are you gonna run for the parliament? Yeah, the parliament. They have a yeah. parliament yeah. government. Yeah. I says no, I'm not running for the you parliament. Have you know, <laughs> um, and because you know, one of the things on that list, from from my recent legislative experience, mm -hmm. will be a bill that I introduced that got passed and now is law is to establish a truth and reconciliation commission for Vermont. And it'll be about a three, three to four year process, um, millions of dollars to stand it up with commissioners and an executive director and staff and to begin the process of, of bringing together groups, whatever group it might be, that has stories and truth to share mm. about harms they experience because of our state policies, because of our laws. Mm. And it is, it is only until we go through that process can we begin to seriously consider reparations. And when you're talking about a legislature this past session where there are only two African-Americans in the house, most of the white folk have white hair. And I say most of them couldn't, couldn't give you a definition for racism. So if that's the body that's gonna to have to approve reparations, we got some work to do for, for them to be moved apples. At, at a place of empathy to understand the, the, the pain and the struggle that so many Vermonters right. have had because of our policies. No doubt about Certainly. it. And I'm glad that, I'm glad, boy, I'm glad you're thinking like, well, of course you are. You know, we've all been thinking like that from day one, you know what I'm saying? But you're right, you know, I mean, this thing where that was, where Newski kind of set up was too, it was like everybody there that was making decisions, who was giving ideas, suggestions, was part of the community. Nice, good people, you know, helped bring um, Winooski to um, this great place, is people who would have all these white hair now, you know? and um, and. I, don't, I say this in a good way that they're no longer a part of that much anymore. You know what I'm saying? It's all the people who knew of people, people who, who um, like created ideas, suggestions based on trying to include everyone like you did, like you do. And um, and then people are younger, like to, with the mayor is like 35 or how old is um, yeah, a lot. She's young. I'm yeah, not like, sure how old. Yeah, yeah, she's, she's on that age. And so how awesome is that? You know, I mean, you got um. And um, how often is that when she got, and all you created the commissions, commissioners, I was, I'm, I'm still there, I would call them commissioner in, um, in Winooski. And so um, how wonderful, like safe and healthy, connected people, like that's one of the commissions, that they work with the community, safe, health, connected and with the people, you know what I mean, in the community. How big is that? It's, you know, you're just not going to make your own ideas and suggestions about anything. You're going to go talk to the people, find out what's, what their goals, dreams, aspirations. How can we make things better in the community? What's your ideas? You know what I mean? How can you be a part and help us? And so how big is that? Because that never ha happened years ago. You know how uh, you've been in the community, me too. But, um, and so I'm glad these changes are happening. And mm -hmm. so, and it's, um, that's what everybody needs to be able to work with the people. Because I tell uh, Lauren and, and uh, my other stuff, Hunter and all our staff that, you know, for us to do anything in anybody's community or any project, we need to go talk to them first. That's What's right. good? Well, how, you, how do you see it? Yeah. What's your vision? And then can you help us? Can your coordinators, can you get your people, your friends, your neighbors, your community, your yeah. school, can we all work together and, and build what, you're, what, you, what you came up with? And we'll help you in these yeah. ways, you know, supplies or whatever, whatever it is, you know, and get, our, get our partners involved. And, yeah. and that's how we, you know, we have over 50 awards. And, and I think that's how we, um, continue to get better because I, I won't I won't do nothing mm. you know and then we're primarily a youth service provider and uh without asking the people who I serve mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. I serve them they don't serve me so thank you I mean it's you got so many incredible things you know that you've created and been a part of or sponsored and like I said the governor was right about um putting you in the legislative you know um well, first, first and foremost, because darn, do we need a person well, to look like? Well, I, you know, I'm going to say it and, that, that I need to look like me. How about that? And, Being and, in the and, and, and the small world that I re referenced earlier about Vermont, Governor Scott, Phil Scott, was on the Senate Institutions Committee. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. And that was back in the day when the Good News Garage was just getting started, and I was down there, you know, begging for money. You know, fifty thousand here, fifty thousand there, and uh, so that's how we first met. 
Oh, great, great. Uh, he, he, didn't want to, he didn't want you to come tune up his um, wrist cards. <laughs> yeah, dude, let me donate one of these wrist cards. Like, oh, we put that in the auction, bro. I wonder if he's still driving. Anyways, thank you. Well, I think, uh, you know, we're going to wrap it up with your beautiful plans for retirement, well-deserved plans for retirement. I hope you and your wife enjoy that. Yeah. Um, you, well, we're gonna have to do a, like a Zoom, Zoom, um, a Google conference to see yeah. how, once you get moving to yeah, see Zoom. how you're doing down there. Zoom and beach let party. Let the, uh, and Vermont, Vermonters see their their friend how you know right. what he's doing or how, you know how's it working for you. My my, my first book project. I just want to share before oh, we wrap yes, up. Yes. Um, uh, I'm 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 zeroing in on a um, a, a historical fiction. Um, uh, format and Dr. Martin Luther King, uh, when he was doing his work in terms of civil rights work, uh, he would be out anywhere in the country, but he always made a point to go back to Atlanta for Sunday so he could preach. That was his, that was his habit. So every Thursday he would send in the title of his sermon. Um, and then, you know, with a couple scant notes, he'd preach. April 3rd, 1968, he mm. sent in the title, mm. Why America May Go to Hell. <laughs> Which, mm -hmm. whoa, what is driving that? What thinking is behind that? And of course, the next day he was murdered. Yeah. Uh, Four. April 4th. 1968. Yeah. So he never mm -hmm. preached that sermon. And wow. I've always been intrigued about what would that have sounded like. Ah, uh, yes. So what I want to do, I want to do some research. And of course, I want to make sure I have the blessings and support of the family, the King family. But I want to do some research to try to understand what, what was in his about? head the year before he was murdered. Mm -hmm. What was driving him to such a title of a sermon mm -hmm. and and through historical fiction try to reconstruct what that sermon might have sounded like. Wow, yeah, that's, that's gonna be a Great, of... I'd like to learn too. When you get that answer, please let me know. That's my um, sure. that's yeah. my project. Yeah, we we definitely wanna zoom you or Google you. So that'll around. keep me busy. Yeah, wow, wow that's a big one. Even More. just your description has me hooked already. Your yeah. idea behind it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, wow. Wow. And he, he was very lonely in the last year of his life mm. because he he was he was fighting for uh, economic justice, not just racial justice, right. not just social justice, right. economic justice. Definitely. He and, always did. and challenging the, the Vietnam War. Yeah. And President Johnson said, you're not welcome here anymore. You just work on civil rights and let us take care of the economic stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, he lost his movement, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when he set up the Poor People's Campaign. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, so he was really starting to rattle the cages too much. Yeah. And that's why he took yeah, it. Yeah, he's going to use the word economics, you know. So anyways, right. I hope to yeah. do that justice. Well, I look forward to reading that, Hal. And uh, it was, uh, should we mention anything else? Uh, well, you want to mention anything about our events coming up? Oh, well, uh, like we'd mentioned last show, we do have um, an open mic that's coming up. We're now in the month of June, so that's going to be a few days away from that. Um, on Thursday, June 9th, open mic at Crew Coffee right at the top of Church Street. We're going to have three performers. We have lovely Sophie and then two other ones to follow. Um, that's going to be at Crew Coffee, the top of Church Street, June 9th, 5 to 7. Uh, we also have our ninth annual Art So Wonderful um, fundraiser expo gallery event. That's going to be July 29th at the Marriott downtown. It's going to be a lovely event to look forward to. And this year's theme is tattoos. So it's going to be a tattoo expo. That's going to be a art so wonderful fundraiser gallery. You can look forward to a lot of our local tattoo artists and parlors there with booths showing off their work, connecting with the community. We'll have art and food and music. There will be a bar. Um, it's going to be a great ninth, ninth annual. Year. Ninth yeah, year. ninth annual. 
fundraising event. So make sure you come through to that on July 29th. That's gonna be uh, around, I think it's five o'clock at the Marriott downtown. And then in August, we can also look forward to a fashion show, an Art So Wonderful fashion show. And that's gonna be held right out of our Art So Wonderful gallery in the University Mall. So we're gonna run a stage right through there. Um, our walkway is gonna be surrounded by people and art. It's gonna be a great event to look forward to. And that's gonna be August 13th. We'll have more details on that coming up. Um, we talk a little, give them like a little something about the function. Oh, and then we are working on a new event space in the heart of downtown. Um, that's going to be huge. It's over 5,000 square feet. Uh, we're working on revamping and painting that. And that's going to be an amazing event space. You know, we have a, there's natural lighting, lots of room for virtually anything to happen there. So mm -hmm. we're looking forward to getting that open as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, awesome. And, you know, awesome. keep doing our shows and welcoming amazing people like Hal Colston. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Hal. Yeah, yeah. It was lovely to meet with you here today. It's nice to meet with you, Lauren. Uh, Thank you. And yeah. Thank you, Bruce, Thank you for, sir. for asking Thank you. me. Yes, sir. We'll look forward to reading your books and uh, Zooming you from Aruba. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we can welcome you on the show at the beach in the background. There you go. I, I was talking to Hal earlier before the show. I said, Hal, what's the weather in the wintertime? He's like, oh, around 82. <laughs> he said, this moment, it's, it's warm, it's nice all around, they're all around um, all the seasons. Can you imagine 82 degrees all every season? Oh my God, we gotta go there. We got so we zoom you, bro. We gonna feel like we're there. You gotta be in a space where you know we can see the, the trees lightly blown. We know it's 82 degrees. Well, that will all definitely right. be something to look forward yeah. to. Uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in to Straight Talk Vermont. This is Lauren Tebow, Hal Colston, and Bruce Wilston at the Little Park, and I uh, hope you have a great weekend. Goodbye. Bye.